Team Building Guide This video is directed primarily at players who are in the early stages of story content, so think chapter 4 to 5 and below. With that in mind, I won't be explaining each and every term since basic tutorials do exist. Let's get started. Arknights is an overall very dynamic game, but you can make reasonable core squads, which works in most situations and that's what we'll be focusing on. In order to make this more friendly for newer players, I'll be referring to classes but do keep in mind that certain exceptions do exist, such as Eunectus or Kautstead being functionally cards. Comment down below if you have any queries. The general rule of thumb here is to fill up your 12 slots with 2 entire snipers, 2 guards, 2 defenders, 2 medics, 2 casters and 2 vanguards. Depending on the different higher rarity units you have however, you might want to swap some units around in your squad as well as to add some flex spots in say your guards or casters as they are the least essential in the early game, at least in the context of not optimizing your stage clears. Anti air snipers are units such as Cruz, Jessica, Vermeil, or Axia. You can recognize them by their trait, prioritizes attacking aero enemies, and they generally have fast attacks that deal low amounts of damage per hit, making them bad against heavily armored targets, but have relatively high damage. In the early game, these units are great due to the prevalence of drones, and stages also tend to spam large quantities of lower defense enemies which they can benefit from greatly. You should always have two of them on your squad, at least before chapter 6, and the order of priority for which two you pick generally goes something like this, any 6 or 5 star as the first ones, followed by May, Cruz, Vermeil, Jessica, and Meteor, with the exception of April, a 5 star. Defenders are some of the units you'll be relying on heavily earlier on due to the stat check nature of certain maps and you can compensate for higher levels on your DPS units as opposed to other ground options. In any case, you'd want one pure defender and another healing defender, the baseline of which the game does give for free. For a pure defender, Quora and Bubble are equally great units that you'll acquire fairly early on and serve you for the entire game in the context of their archetype. Beagle is really cheap and can be used in the brief period where you do not have to form a pair. However, if you have Hoshi, she's certainly good as well, but at that point, I'll recommend rerolling. Meanwhile, the healing defender role can be fulfilled by Spot, which you'll get him for free, but you'll generally replace it with Gummy, Nero, or Sara if you have them, with priority given to the higher rarities in this instant. Medics are also part of what the game stat checks you on in the early game, and it's advised to have two of them, with one being single target and the other being multi target or AoE. An easy way to differentiate them is looking at their range at E1. You won't have access to an AoE medic immediately upon starting the game, so using double single target medics is an okay choice, but you'll get one in time. ST medics wise, you'll prioritize 5 and 6 dust as usual, with the exception of Felinic, and generally use Susuro before that, seeing as she has some insane heals for her cost. Gavio is also a free option from the friend credit store, so she's an upgrade over the 3 stars. In the case of AoE medics, Perfumer is the most easily accessible option, but Thelopsis and Nightingale are straight upgrades. Now onto the classes with a bit more flexibility as they are generally lying outside of your pure core. Vanguards are units which allow you to generate deployment points which speed up initial deployment of other units. Traditionally, you place them down first and once they generate enough deployment points to cover their own cost and then some, they're retreated in favour of other setups such as the classic Defender plus Sniper or Guard plus Defender due to their base stats being generally lower. Most people would tear to utilize two vanguards, but honestly I think one is enough for most people. As early stages aren't rush heavy and natural DP generation is usually sufficient in the context of not a full rarity abuse roster. This also allows you to use the other vanguard slot as a flex slot, which is greatly useful in the early game. Traditional two block vanguards are more friendly to use in that context, and the premier option would be Quarrier, which you can get for free in the friend credits shop. Later on, you'll obtain taxes for free through pinboard missions, but if you're at that stage in the game, you might want to switch to using Myrtle instead. Still a great idea to use Vigna as a 2 box unit in stages, which require early game rushes though. Guards are probably the class that one might feel the hardest to use early on, since they do not have a traditional spot in the typical, say, defender, caster, sniper, medic lineup that a lot of new players are funneled into, and it can be rather difficult to see the intuition behind where they can be utilized effectively if not watching guide videos. I recommend trying to force a DPS centric 2 block guard on every map just to get the hang of things however, and keep the other slot as flex. For that flex slot, it's recommended to raise an assassin-esque unit whether it be Utage, Motoimaru, or even someone outside of class such as Phantom. Casters really shouldn't be controversial, but there's a lot of hate going on for AoE casters in the veteran scene community. AoE casters are somewhat valuable in very early chapters due to how intuitive they are to use 
as well as the tendency for stages to funnel enemies into one clump and thus essentially requiring them. As such, I'll advise for one AoE caster and one single target caster, but the AoE caster position can be retired into a flex slot after maybe chapter 3. Even if you get the higher rarity AoE caster such as Mustima, you only really want to choose one of Lava or Gitano to raise due to their cheap cost. Raising Pinecone or Shiryuki as a replacement for AoE DPS is also a consideration, although that's slightly less new player friendly. Pinecone can punch through armor with a high base damage, and Shiryuki can turn into a pseudo AoE caster with skill 2. As for ST casters, Click is generally recommended over Amir due to higher DPS and some amount of crowd control capability, but using either is fine. I would not advise touching the 5 star variations as they're pretty bad, but the 6 star ones, namely COB and AF Yella, are miles above their lower rarity counterparts. I've mentioned the term flex slot quite a bit here and there, and you should have around 2 to 3 of them. These are for you to fill in depending on what the map requires, as there are certain operators that are incredible in a specific situation but underperforms everywhere else, hence the term niche. Examples of such operators can be Shaw in a non pusher friendly map, or Matoi Maru in a map without high value enemy casters to assassinate. For most maps, you can just use the units you're most comfortable with in those flex slots, or try out how some new ones function, but the flexibility is important and will only grow more apparent later on in the game. Personally, I recommend a fast redeploy, a puller and a pusher, a duelist guard, an art guard and a DP on kill vanguard, specifically Vigna, to be raised for these flex slots. I'll be more than happy to help you with your specific team compositions over in the comments, so do drop one by and I'll try to reply within a day. Subscribe for more videos in this series, I guess.